there are thousands of people in Shifa Hospital, not just uh, patients who are either wounded or sick, but also, as you say, uh, ordinary people from Gaza who have taken shelter. Their hospitals have been seen over the past month throughout this war uh, as being the safest place in Gaza, but that's no longer the case at Shifa Hospital. Doctors there who I've spoken to uh, say they can't do their jobs anymore. There is no fuel to run the generator at the hospital. Uh, they have no medical supplies. They've run out of, of even basic medical equipment at this point, and so they can't treat patients. And they've also run out of, of food and water, by and large. They say they're they're surviving on dates and a few other staples, and uh, they're rationing out what little water they have and giving people sort of just enough once or twice a day to keep them alive. But uh, dire conditions, not just from a, a medical perspective, but just from, from a perspective of survival as well. Well, the Israeli military says it has offered to evacuate newborn babies, but is this even feasible? We're not sure, honestly. The, the past week or so, the Israeli army has been telling people in northern Gaza uh, that they're supposed to have humanitarian corridors by which they can evacuate. The Israeli army told everyone in the north about a month ago to evacuate, but some people either did not or were not able to. And so there were hundreds of thousands of people left in Gaza City and other cities in the north. Uh, we've heard reports almost every single day over the past week of people trying to take advantage of these humanitarian corridors, of the these uh, four-hour pauses in the fighting that the Israeli army has announced. And we've heard reports almost every day of people coming under fire while they're trying to flee to the south. So uh, I think apart from the, the very complicated logistics of, of trying to get babies out, some of whom uh, need ventilators, need incubators, need, need other specialized equipment. Uh, it's just been difficult in general for people to get out of northern Gaza and try to get to the south. Well, Israel says Hamas is to blame for the situation at the hospitals, while Hamas says it has no base underneath these sites. Meanwhile, the fighting near the sites, will that just continue? It will. The Israeli army has more or less surrounded Shifa Hospital at this point, but they haven't received an order from the Israeli government to actually go in and uh, root out this uh, alleged underground headquarters that Hamas has built there. The reason for the delay, a lot of it has to do with, in parallel, there are ongoing talks about a hostage deal, trying to release at least some uh, of the roughly 240 Israeli and foreign hostages who are being held in Gaza. The concern for the Israeli government is that if they go ahead with an incursion into the hospital, uh, that might uh, ruin the possibility of a hostage deal. That might end these ongoing negotiations. So I think for another couple of days, they're going to wait and, and see if these talks, which are being done both in Qatar and in Egypt, uh, see if they bear fruit. But if they don't, then I think in the coming days we're, we're likely to see Israeli troops go into Shifa Hospital. Well, how do you think these latest developments have jeopardised negotiations over the release of hostages? Um, Hamas has reportedly put a pause on these talks. They have, and the talks have been uh, put in jeopardy several times before. There were some reports, I think credible reports, that uh, they were close to a hostage deal last month before Israel went ahead with its ground offensive in Gaza, and that uh, temporarily suspended the negotiations. But there have also been some concerns about, uh, obviously, Israel and, and other foreign countries that are trying to help mediate. They're speaking to the leadership of Hamas outside of Gaza. It's an open question how much influence those leaders still have over the leaders inside of Gaza. Now, there's always been a split between the the internal and the external wings of Hamas. And I think that split has become much more pronounced over the past month. Uh, it's also just difficult to communicate. The people will talk to mediators outside of Gaza. They'll try to get in touch with Hamas officials inside to discuss this, but uh, it can take up to 48 hours for them to get in touch with people inside and, and get a response from inside. So uh, a lot of issues, a lot of complicating factors uh, beyond the, the ground offensive that are making it difficult to reach a hostage deal. Mm. And there's also uncertainty again over Benjamin Netanyahu's plans for a post-war Gaza. What's the latest on Israel's stance here? He doesn't have a plan for post-war Gaza is the, is the short answer. When you talk to the Israeli army, uh, they will tell you that their desired end state in Gaza is to see the Palestinian Authority come back, the body that controls uh, parts of the occupied West Bank that used to govern Gaza until it was thrown out by Hamas in 2007. The Israeli army would like to see the PA come back to Gaza, probably after some kind of interim period where there's a, perhaps a multinational peacekeeping force brought in. Prime Minister Netanyahu twice now over the past few days has explicitly ruled out 
uh, bringing back the PA, which fits with the way he has governed for more than a decade as prime minister. Uh, he's always tried to undermine the PA because the PA is the more moderate Palestinian governing body. And uh, if Israel deals with it, Prime Minister Netanyahu was worried that might lead to pressure for a two-state solution, pressure for a diplomatic agreement, uh, something that, that both he and his far-right political base uh, don't want to do. So he has ruled out bringing back the PA, but when you ask him uh, what he thinks should happen in Gaza afterwards, uh, he doesn't have an answer. I mean, the choices are either bring back the PA or have Israel uh, occupy Gaza in perpetuity, which is not something the Israeli army wants to do. Uh, those are the two choices. And if you're ruling out the PA, then it leaves you with the second choice. Meanwhile, around the world, over the weekend, we've seen more protests. There have been uh, rallies in Paris with the far right, but not the far left, rallying in support of rejecting anti-Semitism. How unprecedented are these uh, protests in France? Around the world, really, this has sparked, uh, I think, unprecedented anger. We heard French President Emmanuel Macron, who had been very supportive of Israel uh, up until a few days ago, coming out and calling for a ceasefire and saying that uh, there were too many women and children who were dying in Gaza. So he has strengthened uh, his rhetoric about the conflict. Uh, over the weekend, we saw in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, there was a gathering of Arab and Muslim majority countries. Uh, which came out with a very strong statement against the war. There really is sort of uh, almost universal uh, condemnation around the world of this war and an almost universal demand for a ceasefire. The only country that is not pushing for one, the only significant country that is not pushing for one, uh, is the United States, where Joe Biden continues to reject any talk of a ceasefire. And because the U.S. is Israel's closest ally, as long as he is not pushing for a ceasefire, uh, I don't think any of this international pressure is likely to influence the Israeli government that much. Greg Karlstrom from The Economist, thanks so much for your time.